Team building rules, guidelines, whatever you want to call them, they're great, right? They're based in strong fundamentals. Uh, they make sure that you can handle the metagame at hand. However, great players break these rules or bend the guidelines, whatever you want to call it. You know, they've got creative ideas for a team, you know, a good team, and sometimes it might not line up with these preconceived ideas of what a team should have, like a water resist, for example. You know, if you can handle the water types in the metagame, you don't need to necessarily have a water resist. All depends on the team. So, you know, pushing these boundaries, this expands our understanding of the game as a whole. However, ever since Generation 4, there has been one team building guideline that you do not break successfully, and that is you need Stealth Rock on every team. So bear with me for a second because I understand in Gens 8 and 9, Heavy Duty Boots changes this a little, but most teams are still going to have Stealth Rock there, right? You know, even the one exception I can think of that was ever successful at all, like these super hardcore... Uh, Gen 7 stall teams with like triple defog, which you know are hoping that the opponent doesn't have enough longevity to just take him to a thousand turns and tie. Right? The ones that are supposed to beat offensive teams that just wear themselves down. You know, those are the exceptions still. So, you know, put those aside. And in Gens 4 through 6, then there are no such exceptions. You know, and I've seen this many, many, many times across multiple generations. Uh, in tournaments where some player thinks, oh, I don't need Stealth Rock, you know, I I'm too good for this. You know, that's not actually what they're thinking. But they're like, no, this team does not need Stealth Rock. You know, how important is Stealth Rock, really? You know, like, I don't even need it to do anything in particular. My team is so good that I just can't fit it. Sorry, you know. And every single time I've seen this happen, Gen 4, Gen 5, Gen 6, Gen 7, then that player has been punished severely. So, you need rocks on every team. This has just been, you know, a truism uh, ever since Generation 4 when I started on the competitive scene. And, you know, like sometimes you see players not do so intentionally, you know, they don't like purposely go, oh, well, I'm not putting rocks on this team for so and so reason. Sometimes they just forget to put rocks on. And, you know, then they like get into a battle, like, oh man, I don't have rocks. Um,. I personally cannot relate, but you know that's that's not a brag. It kind of is, but it's not a brag so much as I had that you know mindset so instilled into me uh, right from my beginnings that you know it's one of the first things I look for. Whereas if someone comes from like Gen uh, two or three, you know when there's not you know this hazard that you need to have on every team, then I understand it more. Or you know if you come from a, a newer generation with uh, boots, for example. <laughs> Uh, anyway, point is, you need rocks. Like, I will not spend this video convincing you of why uh, rocks are so good, because that I have this covered in a lot of different videos. You know, you take the little chip damage for rocks for granted, but let me tell you, 12.5% on neutral targets, that is not insignificant. You think, oh, it's 12.5, big deal. You know, that's the same kind of moveset or moveset, <laughs> mindset, that leads people to thinking, you know, why would you use, like, Leech Seed and, and Toxic when you could just kill things immediately, and then they get their entire team stalled out with ease. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Stealth Rock is a big deal. That 12.5 is really nothing to sneeze at. So, uh, what I'm not gonna, uh, what I am gonna do, rather, is I am going to impress upon you the importance of having rocks on every team and by that same logic we get to the question in the title which is like all right so stealth rock is the gsc snorlax of gens 4 and later right like you need to have it on your team or you are just objectively using a worse team there is nothing you can use there's nothing you're going to replace stealth rock with on any type of team that is just going to make your team better than if you had rocks so, with this in mind, because we all agree, if a GSC Snorlax type Pokemon existed today, it would be gone in two seconds. And I'm not talking Ubers, because I, I know like Gen 8 Ubers had this like weird thing where like Yveltal and Calyrex Shadow were on like 100% of teams or something. Um, <laughs> I don't know the details of that, but like I recognize Ubers as something else. Uh, I also know that a lot of pl players weren't happy about that dynamic, but anyway, point being... Uh, if you have that kind of uh, 
element in a game that mandates 100% usage because otherwise to not use it is just inferior. You know, in a more modern generation, OU generation, or OU and below, then like you gotta you gotta get rid of that. That's super unhealthy for the game, right? So why has that never been done for Stealth Rock? And honestly, it is one of Pokemon's great mysteries. <laughs> it's not for a lack of trying from the community, for sure. Because as far back as 2008, you know, like, I, don't, I think, uh, when was that thread posted? So, uh, June, yeah, this is pre-Platinum, even. Scizor didn't even have Bullet Punch when people were already complaining about Stealth Rock. Because it was pretty quick, like, it wasn't like Gen 4 came out and, like, day one or two people were like, Oh, this new Stealth Rock move, you gotta put it on every team. It wasn't like that, but it also didn't take too long, either, uh, before, you know, people were doing unthinkable things. Uh, com uh, relative to previous generation, like leading off with a Pokemon just to get up rocks and die, like that you that does not work in previous in uh, earlier generations. And I mean, again, please don't get super technical with me. The whole idea of there being suicide leads in Gens two and three is based off of Stealth Rock uh, having that effect in Gens four and uh, on. And you'll also notice, whenever someone tries it in Gens 2 and 3, the power level, uh, both of the hazard and the Pokemon that are trying to abuse the hazard, you know, spikes. You know, stack your one layer of spikes in GSC. Uh, that is, it's never nearly as effective as that kind of approach in Gens 4 and later. So, uh, yeah, ever since, this has been complained about for a long time, you know, ever since people were sacrificing their lead just to get the rocks up and deny their opponent from doing so. And then people realized, yeah, you gotta have this on every team. And so it was complained about. And, uh, it never managed to quite take off. Even though this was not just, you know, like, uh, scrubs at the bottom of the ladder, or, you know, uh... What whatever other kind of player that you know would come in and say, oh, why is Garchomp banned? Because you know I want to use it, or you know Free Ho, oh, it's weak to Stealth Rock. Oh, well, Stealth Rock. Um, th that's kind of th stuff. No, it was you know complained about by like top players, you know players who really knew the game, and it just never managed to take off. And the gist, and we will be glancing at uh, the threads briefly, I won't be going through them because there's a lot of them. And uh, it's not like it was just brought up once, pre-platinum, and then everyone was like, Oh, I guess Stealth Rock's not a problem then. Fine. Uh, so, yeah, basically players complained about it, but it never took off. The gist being that it is such a monumental change to imagine the game without Stealth Rock, number one, that... It just feels like it's going to take too much time to adjust uh, afterwards. You know, it's just going to be too different once you get rid of rocks. And uh, so you can really only do it very early in a generation. Uh, and, you know, that doesn't necessarily work out because there's going to be so much tiering chaos with all the crazy threats running around. You know, things of that nature. So, it's just very difficult to ever make that kind of uh, thing happen. I'm not sure how much I buy that kind of argument, considering, like, at least now, considering how much we know generations uh, change even after they are no longer current. But, you know, putting that aside. Uh, the second thing is that, you know, there's always going to be broken stuff, you know, running around no matter what. So, rocks are just another element of that. But, you know, at the time of rocks being brought up initially as, you know, very broken, then moves in general didn't get banned. You know, like, even Baton Pass took forever to really take action against, and now it's universally regarded as, you know, one of the most ridiculously horrible moves to ever exist in the game. But, you know, at the time it was like, BP, what are you complaining about? Come on, get out of here. But, you know, at the time, you know, you just didn't ban moves. But again, even over time, as we uh, started to realize, you know, moves like Baton Pass or Scald, that video is still coming, uh, they might actually be broken. We might need to actually do something about it. You know, Stealth Rock was uh, mentioned again, but still, never quite enough. Uh, and it's, it's difficult to, you know, imagine 
But basically, rocks not being banned is a result of them being so collectively normalized. I don't know why I said collect well, I guess collectively across the generations. But it's just been so deeply ingrained across such a long period of time. It's so normal that we don't even you know look at this GSC Snorlax of our time and go, oh yeah, you know that's that's kind of busted. It's like, oh no, totally normal. <laughs> you know, and it's. Yeah, I, again, the power of Stealthrack is unmatched. You know, you hit everything that's not Magic Guard or Boots in your generations. One turn of use. You know, you have potential huge upsides of hitting things super effectively. You know, even uh, things that resist it don't love taking it. You know, whether it's having lefties neutralized or, you know. And then, of course, people raise alarm bells. Like, oh my god, Focus Sash would be broken if you didn't have uh, Stealth Rock in the game. Like, yeah, okay. I'm sure, I, I'm, yeah, I don't think that's the case for so many reasons I almost don't even know where to start but like a wall a, a defensive Pokemon does not care if an offensive Pokemon has still uh, has a focus hash intact most of the time I, I, obviously there are exceptions of course but uh, you know there's also other forms of passive damage like spikes and sand yeah and in general I it's uh, it actually was tested once not officially but uh, this argument has been raised so many times over so many generations that at a certain point in Gen 5, uh, near the end, when, you know, Keldeo hadn't been banned, another massive failure of tiering, uh, then uh, we were like, well, we didn't know what to do, we don't know what to do, so let's just throw out a, a ladder without Stealth Rock. And guess what? Uh, Focus Ash was not broken at all. And in fact, I remember many players... Uh, talking about how balanced that metagame was. Obviously, you can't, you have to take that with a grain of salt because, you know, any new metagame is going to seem fun and fresh and balanced, um, you know, most of the time anyway, at least at first before broken elements uh, start popping up. But, you know, broken elements pop up even without rocks. You know, and obviously there's that argument of, oh, what about all the insane, you know, flying types or rock weak Pokemon that would just go crazy without it? Well, you know, those Pokemon tend to be broken anyway. Like, uh, you know, Salamence got banned in Gen 4 still. Uh, number one, there are going to be, you know, uh, lots of super crazy Pokemon that are busted with or without rocks. And uh, even more so, you say, oh, well, you know, things like Gyarados, Zapdos become, you know, unkillable without Stealth Rock. And, you know, you even see that in practice sometimes in games where, like, a Gyarados or a Zapdos user will manage to play without rocks. And, uh, you know, whether they spin or they, you know, pressure enough or whatever. Or they just, you know, in Zapdos' case, like, you roost off, and you roost off your initial stealth rocket, and then you become unkillable. That happens uh, quite a bit in Gen 4. Um, but the, yeah, the point being that, yes, you do have things, like, especially once Volcarona enters the picture, right? So, well, some people think the Volcarona's broken even with its uh, stealth rock weakness. But, you know, the idea is that, yes, as crazy as stealth rock is in keeping certain Pokemon in uh, check... It also limits options you might otherwise have in order to keep uh, these potentially broken Pokemon in check. Like uh, Moltres, for example, would be a wonderful Pokemon in Generation 4 if it were not for Stealth Rock. Its defensive profile is absolutely excellent, you know? Uh, you, could do, you could pull all sorts of Stealth Rock weak stuff, like Zapdos would be a fantastic defensive Pokemon in Gen 5, for example, uh, if it wasn't plagued by Stealth Rock. So... First of all, uh, you don't check broken with broken. That's just generally a good tiering philosophy. Like, if something is broken, you don't keep it around because, well, you know, it keeps other broken things in check. You know, then you would ban those things. And this is just kind of a classic ban aversion kind of uh, way of thinking, which is like, oh, well, we can't ban such and such broken Pokemon because it's usually a Pokemon because then we'd have to ban, you know, other Pokemon afterwards. And uh, that doesn't, you know... Uh, tend to fly. Uh, well, it flies more than it should because tiering discussions are wild. But yeah, uh, that should apply to Stealth Rock as well. And also, that whole thing, like, yes, yeah, some Pokemon might be broken without Stealth Rock, you know, but Stealth Rock also tends to make some things broken. Or, you know, exacerbate their brokenness uh, by a big deal, by a large amount. You know, when you remove Stealth Rock, then you increase the Pokemon that can be used to check potentially broken stuff. So, uh, the initial, I, I'll leave the link to all these uh, threads in the pinned comment, but I mean, look at that, June 2008, this wasn't just pre-platinum, this was months before 
uh, Platinum came out in Japan, you know, which I, I think that was like October or something. This is bef this is while Garchomp is still running around in OU. <laughs> Garchomp and Deoxys speed actually. So yeah, um, it's you know there. Uh, look at the uh, enough issues to debate, but there's all yeah. It's uh, it's well. I'm I'm not gonna read this thread for you because it's a very long thread, and I, I think these things are fascinating. Uh, I will just skim through. For, so to wrap up this video, we're gonna skim through the existence of all these uh, threads and you know see, and then I'll mention something else in particular that uh, because. Not all anti South Rock discussions happen on forums, as but the fact is that they have uh, been uh, documented on the forums so many times. So this is the first one I could find, June 2008, and uh, then November 2008, oh, a couple months later. So this is just after Platinum uh, was banned, uh, or Platinum was banned, uh, after Deoxys Speed was banned, after uh, Platinum came out. So... Uh, then this one I remember because this is right after uh, black and white came out so uh, This is loco poke who is an excellent player uh, bringing the issue up and you know other uh, Other top players are weighing in and they make a lot of interesting arguments But uh, the impact of stealth rock on every aspect of Pokemon since gen 4 is undeniable every tier so you know, th this was a good timing on Locofolk's part because this was like a month after Black and White came out. So it's like, look, if you want to get rocks up or get rocks tested at all, because rocks have never even been tested, not seriously. That ladder at the end of Gen 5, that's not a real test because it was never actually considered for any sort of action. You know, so you got to do it early on. You got to decide, do you want, you know, the, the broken element, which we know is broken by now. Do you want it running around and, you know, shaping things? Uh, or do you want to test the game without it? Because you know, there's going to be Pokemon banned with or without rocks, right? There's going to be crazy stuff running around. So it's just pretty much, do you want a um, this in insane game element ar running around, you know, shaping things. And um, arguably causing more harm than good with how, you know, GSC Snorlax tier it is. So this is uh, October, uh, end of October 2010. And then another one, this is April 28th, 2013. So well into Black and White 2. You know, this is, like, over half a year before XY comes out, to my recollection. Or around half a year. So, it's just discussed here, and... Yeah, and then there was a debate, uh, just a couple days later. You know, May 2013, and people saying, Oh, rocks are, uh... Are rocks broken? And then, you know, here's in September 2014, so right around the time XY comes out, or right before, I don't remember exactly. But uh, this is when people started, you know, playing on the Stealth Rock ladder, and I remember, yeah, people were saying, yeah, it's actually, it's pretty good, it's not bad. You know, Focus Ash was not actually broken. And then again, at the beginning of Sun and Moon, uh, October 2016, uh, then... Actually, I think it came out in November, but, you know, this is right before uh, it came out. So, it was timed, you know, even earlier, you know, to, like, hey, before this generation comes out, let's talk about what we're going to do about rocks, because this thing has been broken since Gen 4, and, you know, we don't do anything about it. So, if we are going to do anything about it, it has to be right away. And then, I, I these arguments get thrown around again, and, uh... I, it's the same arguments over and over. I will let you read these for yourselves if you are interested. But they're basically rehashes of the same arguments that have been made ever since Gen 4. It's like, oh, well, it's not that broken. Oh, it, shaped, it keeps the broken things in check and all that other stuff. So, um, yeah, this... Yeah, and there's, uh, there's also a, a lot of doubts, I just noticed in one of those posts. That like, oh, you know, are we sure that the metagame would be better? Which I think is silly. It's like, well, you never know guaranteed that, you know, some a poke there's never evidence like uh, that uh, something, a uh, metagame is going to be better without, um, without the element that you want to get rid of. You know, there's only very strong uh, possibilities that you can reason out through your understanding of Pokemon as, the, uh, as a game. You know, and you can always undo it if it winds up winds up being a disaster. And you can laugh, oh, we were so silly to ban Stealth Rock. But, you know, it's th that kind of argument gets thrown around in tiering a lot. You know, it's like, oh, there's never any evidence that, um, 
that su such and such game would be uh, better, you know, without, if you wanted to ban Age of, that happened around the time um, Age of Slash was getting talked about in XY, I remember. You know, a lot of uh, people in charge of tiering were like, okay, where's the evidence that XY would be better without Age of Slash? It's like, well, you know, what do you mean by evidence? Do you mean, you know, like some sort of proof? Like, you know, someone traveled to the future and said, look, the metagame is better. You know, it's like, no, Age of Slash has a constrictive, an overly restrictive grasp on, you know, chokehold on the game. And we want to get rid of it. Uh, because we think it would make the metagame better, and you can always undo it later. And it's the same exact thing with Stealth Rock. So these threads kind of tend to go in circles. But I, I think a lot of the arguments are really bad. So, you know, just not worth it, whatever. Um, so before uh, I leave you be, I remember in 2016, then a lot of... Um, a couple of DPP, player, DPP players, including myself and uh, Heist, were talking about how... Because this is around the time where people really wanted to ban Breloom because of how oppressive it was to deal with. Breloom's a great Pokemon, of course, but Breloom's dominance was, and it continues to be, uh, largely a product of how strong it is in conjunction with Stealth Rock. I mean, it'd still be great without it, of course, but it's you know, the fact that rocks limit its checks and counters so harshly that made it so particularly oppressive. And then the metagame adapted to deal with it, but, you know, it is still very restrictive. Uh, and, you know, being restrictive is not always a bad thing, but generally, uh, Pokemon will be a restrictive game just by its very nature. Just by the nature of Pokemon being better than other Pokemon, then it's going to shape itself into some sort of restrictive format either way. You know, you help it along with, you know, um, shaping it with bands uh, to... Because you don't want too many things to be really viable, because then things are just chaos. But you also don't want to keep broken things around just because they are, you know, a, a balancing factor. Ideally, anyway, you know, tiering can be such a complicated thing. But yeah, and um, a lot of the complaints about DPP at the time were not just specific to DPP. It was just um, the fact that, like, even, like, Black and White are, for example, very famously affected by it, or Oris. You know, the whole thing uh, centered around hazards like hazards yes and get it hazard control just sucks and so badly so really the best ways to deal with hazards is to you know either win games in like six turns before they can do anything uh you know or do much of anything or just make these teams that take the game super slowly and just ignore them entirely as much as you can you know just to take two examples but those basic ideas uh all uh, they both stem from the fact that switching is the backbone of competitive Pokemon, right? That's what really makes the game what it is. And Stealth Rock, far more than Spikes and Toxic Spikes and Sticky Web, like yes, those can be restrictive as well, but it's really Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock is the one that's on every team. And the basic idea being that Stealth Rock punishes switches way too hard. You know, even even if it's not, you know, ripping 25% away from Stealth Rock weak Pokemon. You know, even if it's not that, just that 12.5 earlier, a neutral Pokemon. You know, a lot of Pokemon are neutral to Rock. You know, and even that winds up being so significant that switching around becomes, you know, way too punishable more than is believed to be reasonable. But yeah, uh, it's... it's too intrinsic to the game in a lot of people's view, and that's why it's never been uh, seriously considered. So, uh, yeah, I th that's pretty much it. So, thank you for watching slash listening. I hope this was informative for you, and please do let me know if you think the game would be better without rocks. Because I, I know a lot of people, you know, whether they're more competitive or casual competitive or whatever, you know, I know a lot of people don't like the way rocks are implemented and you know I wouldn't even agree with that I don't necessarily mind there being a hazard that hits everything but I I, I think it's too hard like even uh, I remember a lot of advanced players uh, like there were a lot of players who were like advanced players who were like just delete stealth rock it's a horrible move to have around but even others were like you know stealth rock wouldn't be so bad if you just toned down its power you know that if, if you just made it less extreme like, again, t I, I cannot stress enough how much 12.5 is. You know, like, out of 100? So that means you're starting at less than 90%, you know, the first time you switch it. That's that's huge. You know, like, uh, dealing with uh, a Suicune at full health versus 87.5, that's, that's a major difference. So, especially in a game uh, like Pokemon, which is decided by such low percentages all the time. So, yeah, that's... 
that's Pokemon. Oh, uh, that's Pokemon. That's uh, Stealth Rock for you. Thank you. I hope this was enjoyable. And uh, let me know if you think Rock should be deleted or, you know, or changed type. I, I got some comments. Where it's like, what if Stealth Rock was Ice type? And like, yeah, that that would be make things better. <laughs> yeah. So once again, I will see you in the next one.